PBR World Final. The crowd roars as Luke Collins puts on his gloves, putting a tight bandage around his wrists as he gets ready to ride the angry Rango. The announcer boasts Luke's confidence, loudly exclaiming in his speaker how the fierce man is ready to rock and roll. Luke Collins has a cowboy hat adorning the top of his head, as he has a motivated look in his eyes. He finally gets let out of the cage, riding the angry bull who jumps up and down with a fierce motion, trying to get Luke off his back, literally. The crowd cheers but, all of a sudden, against everyone's expectations, Luke flies off the bull and lands in a heap on the floor, probably breaking a few bones. The next scene seems to be a dormitory. A girl with brown hair and a bright smile holds brown ankle boots in her hands, and looks for a girl named Sophia. Sophia sits in her room, studying. She calls her brown-haired friend, who is clad in a huge cowboy hat, ridiculous and laughs. Her friend seems to want to take Sophia somewhere, but Sophia wants to stay and work, even though it is their second semester of final year. The brown-haired friend begs Sophia to go with her to watch bull riding, even though Sophia says she is not a rodeo type of gal. Sophia's friend tells her that she is missing the point. The point is that there will be several hot guys at the bull riding event. After so much convincing, she finally agrees, making her friend cheer loudly. The girls from the door, all lined up wearing cowboy boots walk into the stadium, with the intention to grab a hot cowboy for themselves. Sophia watches with wide eyes as cowboys ride angry bulls, not believing that people would take part in such a sport. Her friend beckons her to look towards a guy about to go into the ring. It's Luke Collins from North Carolina, slapping his chest with pure determination. The crowd cheers loudly for him as the girls walk towards the front seats of the stadium. The announcer tells the audience how an injury a year ago has affected Luke, but he is back in the ring. He is currently ranked 52 in the entire world. Luke's partner asks if he is ready for it, and he looks back and winks at his friend, who seems concerned. The force of the bull is enough to shake the iced coffee in Sophia's friend's hand. Luke gets sudden flashbacks of his bull ride, the same one that injured him. It must have traumatized him to be hurt in this way. He takes deep breaths to calm himself down and screams let's go. The bull shakes and spins around and around, giving Luke a hard time, but he remains steadfast. At long last, he exceeds the timer and jumps off the angry bull, cheering loudly for himself. He seems to have made a new record, making the entire crowd roar. Suddenly, the bull chases after Luke, who outruns it by getting onto the steel bars, he drops his black hat right by Sophia's feet and looks at her with sparkling eyes. After the bull is safely in the cage, Luke gets off the railings and starts to walk back. Sophia quickly picks up the hat and shouts at him. Luke looks back and in a charming way, tells her to keep it. She smiles and wears the hat on her head as her friends tease her from behind. Later on, the girls go to Buck and Bull, where musicians sing an upbeat, rock song and Sophia watches her friend dance with a cowboy. Outside, Luke sits alone looking at the sky when he is approached by another cowboy who pats him on the back and expresses his relief now that Luke is back in the game. However, he soon has to go, and someone tells Luke how he has a long way to go until he is at the top again. Just then, Sophia walks out, wearing his cowboy hat. Luke calls out to her, teasingly saying that he has a hat just like that. Sophia sheepishly tries returning it, but he refuses, telling her to keep it. She wears it wrong so he fixes the hat on her head, calling the fit beautiful, making her smile at him. They introduce themselves before Luke asks her if he can get her a drink. But Sophia exclaims that since he is the big winner tonight, she should be the one buying him a beer. He denies it, saying that it does not work like that from where he is. She laughs and agrees. As they walk back, Marcia, her friend, staggers out, drunk. Sophia introduces Luke to her and Marcia introduces herself as Sophia's sorority sister. Marcia drunkenly tells Luke he is gorgeous, but then starts getting sick. Sophia tells Luke she should take her friend home, and that she would call him, but she has a feeling it doesn't work like that for him to which he agrees and unsurely says that he will call her. The next day, Marcia scolds Sophia for not picking up Luke's call. But the blonde girl tells her friend that there is no point, since she will be moving to New York soon. Later, as she is working on her laptop, she sees Luke's black hat sitting near her. She wears it, remembering his face, but tries to ignore the feeling. Turns out, she can't. She ends up calling him, wanting it to go to voicemail, but he picks up. Nervously, she asks quickly if he wants to hang out with her, grab a coffee or something. But surprisingly, he blatantly says no. Surprised and taken aback, she tells him that she should just let him go then. But Luke laughs on the line, telling her he is messing with her. She laughs too, and then he asks her out to dinner. She's surprised at his old school asking out because most guys would randomly just text girls and ask them to hang out, whereas Luke is proper. He picks her up, rides in a red truck, and walks on campus wearing his huge hat with flowers, making everyone stare. He finally finds her sorority house and rings the doorbell. Marcia answers and greets him, beckoning him inside. Sophia walks down the stairs and Luke hands her flowers. The girls witnessing the scene giggle and swoon over his mannerisms. In the car, Luke says she never told him she lives in a sorority house, 
but she says it had the cheapest rent on campus. They joke around a bit before she asks where they are going, but he says it is a surprise. They ride through the forest area and clear road, finally parking near a lake. Sophia likes it though, she calls the view breathtaking. He sets up a cover on the wooden bench and takes out Smock and Amy's, the best barbecue in the area. They talk and eat all evening, and all night. Sophia tells Luke her history of how she ended up here. She tells him she loves art, and that is what she is studying. He stares at her intently as she talks passionately about her interest. She asks him to tell her his history, and he tells her it's pretty simple. Keep winning events until he gets to the big game. He mentions his injury from last year, telling her that all bull riders get hurt. She asks how bad his injury is, but he tells her he has more years before he retires. He opens up about the fact that he has to keep making money to support his mother. He notices that she is starting to feel cold, so he builds a small fire near them and they sit by it, holding hands and having a good time. She gently tells him that no one has ever done anything like this for her before. And he stares at her with a certain adoration in his eyes, before he changes the topic and asks if she likes North Carolina. She confesses that she is moving to New York by the end of next month, because she got a job at a gallery in Manhattan. She tells him that that was the reason she wasn't calling him back, but he assures her that she made the right choice. As it is about to rain, he offers to take her home. Once they are in their car, riding, Luke sees something on the side of the road and gets out of the car, rushing toward it. He realizes that it is a car on fire after bumping into a tree. In the loudness of the rain, he shouts at Sophia to call 911, who fumbles out her phone quickly. Luke rushes to the car and tries to take the man in the driving seat out. The man tells Sophia to take a box out of the car and she does so. They rush the old man to the hospital. Once there, Sophia compliments Luke for saving a man's life. Sophia tells Luke she wants to stay until the man wakes up. She thanks him for the night he gave her, and he leaves after wishing her luck in New York. While he is leaving, he looks back at her while she stares at him leave. Sitting alone, she looks at the old man's box, opens it, and sees a bunch of letters in it. They are all written to the same person, someone named Ruth. The letters are old, dating back to the 1940s. They are to a girl named Ruth, and in the letter, the man talks about the first time he met this girl, when she walked into his father's store with her mother, newly in town from Vienna. The man, Ira, fell in love with Ruth and used to stare at her whenever they were close. He talks about how he always found ways to talk to her. But, as he visited her one day, he saves Ruth from another man at a restaurant. As Sophia reads the letter, the nurse comes to her, telling her she can meet the old man now that he is awake. She walks inside the room to see the old man grumbling about his health. Sophia knocks on the door and the man rudely asks who she is. She shows him the box, telling him he asked her to get the box out. He thanks her, and the nurse tells her that it seems like he likes her, telling her to get him to eat something. She asks him to eat something, but it seems he wants to starve himself. Angrily, Sophia asks if that is what Ruth would want. Insulted, the man asks if she has read his letters, but she replies back haughtily, afterward calling the letters beautiful. The man gets one of the letters out, wobbly putting his reading glasses on, but he soon takes them off again, telling him he has not been able to read the letters for years now even with glasses. She proposes that she should read them to him. The old man looks at her and slowly hands her the letter, but she tells him that he has to eat first, and then she will read. Sophia starts reading the letters, and Ira's story begins again. He was hoping their service at the synagogue would be longer. Ruth approaches Ira, and asks if he will ever talk to her. She asks if she frightens him, and he chuckles. She admits that she saw what he did to the rose that was in his hand once he saw her sitting with another. To his embarrassment, she says he has no reason to be shy, it was a lovely gesture to her. Ruth asks if he wants to walk her home, and they do so, walking along the trees on the sidewalk as she talks about the beautiful Vienna. She loudly wonders what right she has to be happy in a world where there is so much suffering. But Ira asks her what right she does not have to be happy. Ruth calls Ira a country pumpkin, even though the correct term is bumpkin. He laughs at the cute error. They finally reach her home and she thanks him. He tells her it was a pleasure. There seem to be some unsaid words between them as Ira walks away, but he quickly walks back, asking her out. She laughs and agrees to meet him soon, saying they will not get any younger than this. He watches her go with a smile. Sophia finishes reading the letter, making the old man close his eyes. She asks if he wants her to read another one. He says yes in his own way, but he also asks her to come back often, probably so that she can read him these letters. Hearing this, she smiles happily. Luke is back in the ring, getting ready to ride a big angry bull. This match might be his ticket to Vegas, but it doesn't work out and he walks back, frustrated and disappointed in himself. Later, alone, he opens up a box of pills but accidentally spills them, along with a note that he reads interested. Luke drives back to his mom's house, kissing her cheek as a greeting. She berates him for continuing bull riding, telling him to give it up. He drinks coffee while she asks him what is going on. At first, he says it's nothing, 
but then he tells his mom that he met a girl and cannot stop thinking about her. The downside is that she is moving to New York next month. Sophia visits the old Mr. Era again, and he shakily gets the letter out for her to read. She sits beside him and starts. At the time Ruth and Ira dressed all fancy and she took him out on an adventure. She shows him a painting of a distorted landscape and expresses her love for art. He then dances with her to upbeat jazzy trumpet music. They tap dance and twirl each other around and around as the couples around them witness. As he picks her up, they stare at each other lovingly before kissing in the middle of the dance floor. Ira says that their kiss was a promise for everything to come. Their days became months and they went on vacation to new beautiful places. Ruth tells Ira by the beach that this is the first time North Carolina felt like home. They play in the water together, and later he has dinner together with Ruth's family. Later, one day, as they sit by the sea, Ira wants to tell Ruth something. But before he says anything, Ruth exclaims that she wants a big family, with many kids. He looks at her and says sounds perfect. Ira promises to love her forever, and then proposes to her. She kisses him and later, they toast with her family, celebrating the reunion. After reading the letter, Sophia lays the old man down gently. She drives back with the radio playing a country song. The next morning, Luke drives to the hospital as well. He meets up with Ira and introduces himself. Sophia walks up behind them, surprising them. Even she is surprised to see Luke at the hospital. The handsome cowboy hands Ira a picture of young Ruth in him, saying he found it in his car and thought the old man might want to hold on to it. Ira looks at the picture and remembers the time the US was attacked and he had to join as a soldier. On the battlefield, Ira runs up to save someone screaming for help while running through the explosions. When he reaches the soldier, he sees that his leg is bloody and he cannot move. Ira picks him up but as he is running back, a bullet hits him. He however makes it back. A few days later, he is at the hospital and the doctor is apologizing to him. Ira looks traumatized as he stares at the ceiling. At night, he looks outside Ruth's house and watches her sadly. He narrates that after he came back from war, he changed. Ruth visits him one morning at a breakfast bar, but he refuses to look her way. She offers to help him through whatever he is going through, and then says she deserves an explanation. Ira looks at her, and he discusses the fact that his wound got infected and he cannot have children anymore. Ruth positively exclaims that they can see another doctor and get a second opinion, but he is hell-bent on the fact that he does not want her to give up her dreams of having a big family. He leaves her sitting alone. After the war was over, Ira thinks his life is over too, but one day, Ruth rushes inside his shop and exclaims that there is no future without him. They kiss and kiss. Old man Ira tells his story to the two youngsters. Afterward, they walk out of the hospital and Sophia tells him that it was really nice to see him. He asks her what she is doing right now. He takes her out for a game of pool and drinks, and as she positions herself, he distracts her by bringing his face close to hers. However, it does not work. Later on, they have a bowl of mac and cheese and talk about their favorite foods. Sophia tells Luke that her parents who were immigrants made life very different for her living in the US. They talk a little more and she takes him to a photo booth where they take pictures and while doing so, they kiss. The next day, they meet again and this time, he teaches her how to ride a horse. They ride together happily, laughing and racing each other. The mood is soothing as the two of them walk back, her complimenting him. She challenges him, saying he can't beat her in a race on foot back to the barn. But as she is running down a way Luke does not recommend, she falls face first into a small pond, laughing to herself. He takes her to his barn, where he has set up his entire home, and notifies her of where the shower is, offering to make her soup. As she is stripping off her wet clothes, he shyly eyes her. She holds his gaze as she gets completely naked, and he takes it as a sign and walks to her. They kiss and make love in the shower. Later, Luke teaches Sophia how he practices bull riding in his barn and teaches her the intricacies. The scene simultaneously shows Luke during competitions with Sophia cheering for him, and then making love after every competition he wins. The next day, Sophia visits Ira again. He cheekily asks if he looks handsome, and she assures him he does. Just then she gets a call about a great opportunity. Ira says he didn't know she was interested in art. He then tells her that Ruth loved art too. He asks her if she knows a place called the Black Mountain, it was a painting Ruth loved a lot, and Sophia surprisingly tells him that she is doing her thesis statement on that. He starts the story again, of the time during his and his new wife's honeymoon when they were headed to Black Mountain as well. As Ira and Ruth drive along the scenic views, they reach Black Mountain College. Artistic students pose in the sunlight as they cross by. They go to an art gallery, where Ruth sees an artist she admires, Kandinsky. As she is loudly expressing her love, a woman who is painting turns back to look at them, and Ruth quickly apologizes. They walk outside and sit by the trees, and then Ira takes her somewhere by the lake, where he shows her the painting he got for her, which was being painted by the woman they interrupted. She jumps into his arms with happiness. After that, Ira narrates that they start the process of building a family together. They set up their entire house and Ruth hangs the painting he got for her. Ira takes over his father's booming business as Ruth starts teaching children at a local school. Old man, Ira, tells Sophia that life was perfect for him, 
for a while. Later that night, the young art student visits Luke's house where his mother shows her photos of his childhood. Luke's mother brings up the topic of him leaving bull riding, but he doesn't reply back. Sophia gets to know that Luke's father died of a heart attack almost five years ago. Later that night, they lay in Luke's bed together as Sophia questions him about how his mother wants him to leave the sport. He avoids the topic altogether. They lay together as she shows him a painting of an artist that is well-renowned. Luke promises to be at an art gallery event with her, even though he has a competition later that afternoon. At the event, Sophia wears a blue dress and greets Luke, who arrives wearing a tuxedo, making him look dashing. However, she does not get much time to talk to him because she has to attend several guests. Luke sits alone with a glass of champagne in his hands, and when Sophia is a little free, he walks to her. She introduces him to her boss, Adrian, but Luke is extremely blunt and rude about his dislike for art. Sophia's boss does not take it seriously. However, the couple rushes outside, and Sophia scolds him for being so rude. She tells him that she tries to fit into his world so why can't he fit into hers? Luke explains how uncertain he feels their relationship is, something Sophia agrees to, but she tells him she wants to make it work somehow. They lay together at night. The next day, Sophia takes advice from Ira, asking if Luke and her should make it work. She uses him as an example, saying he made it work, but the old man tells her it was not that simple. He saw how much Ruth wanted to have a family, and as she watched mothers with children, she felt envious and sad. One day, as she is teaching, the class bull is a sleeping boy. She scolds them and later on, visits the boy, Daniel's house. Daniel was being raised by a half-brother who did not care if the little boy starved. Ruth brings the malnourished boy to her house, she feeds him. After dinner, she takes him to her telescope and shows him the stars. Slowly but surely, the boy learns the correct etiquette and mannerisms. Ruth tutors him every day, and he stays for dinner sometimes. Ira and Ruth argue because she wants to adopt the child. They painstakingly take Daniel back to his guardians, who watch Ruth menacingly. Ruth bends by him and tells him he can be anything he wants to be because he is so clever. His guardians take him away while Ruth is saying goodbye to the little boy, and Ira has to drag her away from the house. At dinner time, Ruth quietly plays with her food, seemingly angry at Ira, who asks what he did wrong. Ruth tells him he should have fought for custody, but Ira is realistic. He tells her they wouldn't have stood a chance. Ira speaks some sense into Ruth, and he looks in her eyes and tells her that she is his family, but she does not reply and continues eating. Looking at her monotonous reaction, Ira gets up from the table and walks away, saying he wanted kids too. Old Ira tells Sophia that this was the last time they saw Daniel. Luke has a bull riding competition and he rides the angry creature with galore. He passes the seconds that lead to his victory, but his landing on the ground is sloppy and he bumps into the railing, falling to the floor in a mess. The angry bull gets ready to pummel Luke with his horns as it rubs its hooves on the dirt pavement. The bull is quickly put back in its cage, and the announcer loudly exclaims that Luke just won ninth place in the world. However, he does not seem normal. Luke gets up off the floor as his friend, Lewis asks if he is okay. His voice is distorted as he says he is fine, and faints in his friend's arms in the middle of the arena. Sophia, who is just leaving for New York gets a call from Lewis, who tells her that something has happened to Luke. She rushes to the hospital, but the nurse at the counter says only family is allowed to see him. After a while, she is allowed in to see him and she rushes inside, kissing her boyfriend and thanking God that he is fine. Luke assures her that he just got a little dizzy, but the doctor who is standing there tells him that he is lucky to even be alive. Sophia stares at the doctor wide-eyed as he leaves. She asks Luke what the doc is saying, but he says he is tired and wishes to talk about it tomorrow. Outside the hospital, Sophia calls her boss and apologizes for the delay. At first, Adrian is understanding, but Sophia says she does not know when she might come to New York, making her boss ask if she is rethinking the internship. Sophia has tears in her eyes as she rethinks her entire career. Later that night, she pulls up Luke's bull ride competition video from last year, from when he got injured. As she watches with dread, she sees Luke somersault off the bull, falling onto the floor. But the video did not end there, the bull comes back and throws Luke back with his horns again. Seeing her boyfriend like this, she closes her laptop. A few days later, Sophia helps Luke get a discharge and drives him home. He is about to get off, but Sophia stops him, saying she is sorry for the way he has to give up his career. She tells him that she knows it must be really difficult for him to get through this, losing his career. Luke refuses to look her in the eyes, making Sophia angry. She knows what he is up to, she knows he won't leave bull riding no matter what the doctor says. She berates him, asking if he is kidding. The doctor was clear when he said that Luke's bull riding days were over. He gets out of the car in anger and she follows him out, yelling that he has to quit. The mood seems to be extremely intense as the couple has a fight right outside his house. She says she does not want to be with someone who might die every time he walks out the door. Sophia further tells Luke that she chose him over her internship, over New York, but instead of understanding, he tells her he did not ask her to do any of that for him, 
and that she can't expect him to change his life. She stares at him with furrowed eyebrows, and he tells her this is his whole life. She leaves after telling him that she can't see him ruin his life. Sophia goes to where Ara lies down. She cries and tells him that she never made it to New York and broke up with Luke. He calls her over and kisses her hand, asking how he can help. And the girl asks him to get her mind off the details of the events. She asks what happened after the fight Ira had with Ruth over Daniel. He says he cannot believe how quickly people can become strangers. Young Ira sits alone on the patio, reading. Ruth comes up to him, and she cries as she tells him she cannot do this anymore because she feels like she is going crazy. She tells him it's not his fault, wipes her tears, and goes to pack her bags. As she walks down with her suitcase, Luke waits for her by the stairs. He says he needs to say something. He tells her that he fell in love with her at first sight, she was beautiful and somehow she chose him, but he says he loves her even more now, and that is why he is ready to let her go, because her happiness matters more to him than anything. Old Ira tells Sophia that love requires sacrifice, she stares at him with sadness. Young Ira is alone in his house, the loneliness is beginning to show, as he sits alone. One day, however, Ruth enters back, with her suitcases. They run up to each other and kiss. It seems she came back to him. Old Ira narrates that it wasn't happily ever after but the couple thanked God for everything they had, filling their house with beautiful abstract paintings and driving to Black Mountain for every anniversary. They grew old together. One day, at six, he woke up beside Ruth, who did not wake up. The old man cried in his lover's arms. Ira packed the paintings he bought for Ruth because they served as a reminder of what he had lost. One day, he gets a visitor. It is a young woman, telling him she is Daniel's wife. He died because of a brain aneurysm, but he led a successful life as a professor of astrology. She gives him something that he had made for Ruth, the woman who told him that he could be anything he wanted to be, a portrait of her. Ira tells Sophia that she did everything she could for Luke. Sophia smiles at him and tells him she had a great time with him. Luke comes back a few days later after winning a competition that puts him fifth in the entire world. But his mother who waits outside for him says nothing, except for the fact that he should not give up Sophia, who could be the rest of his life. Sophia gets a call from Ira's attorney, who tells her the news of Ira's passing. He tells her that she is invited to Mr. Levinson's auction for his art collection. Sophia sits on the stairs and cries, not believing that the man she had grown so close to passed away. About to go to a competition, Luke reads some letters that are in his car, one of them informing him of Ira's death, and that the old man wishes for him to be at the auction. As he enters the competition and gets announced, he picks the bull he will be riding. And unfortunately, it is Rango the bull that injured him. Luke gets on top of the fierce bull, flashbacks coming back to him of his injuries. He however is determined to win this. This is his chance to get over his trauma, and the humiliation he got last year when he could not conquer Rango. Luke enters the arena and rides Rango, and he manages to stay on top. The crowd cheers for him as he makes an amazing comeback from last year. Luke gets off Rango and takes his hat off with triumph as the crowd roars for him. However, he is not happy. He is searching for Sophia's face in the crowd, but he does not find it. Ignoring everyone, he rushes out to see her. He seems to have come to an understanding that he cannot be happy without her, even if he is winning competitions and getting deals. Sophia is at the auction and she is surprised to see paintings from so many famous, well-known, renowned artists. Her mouth is wide open as she sheepishly takes her seat. From the back, Luke also enters the hall, takes his hat off, and looks around for Sophia. Ira's attorney reads the letter he left. In the letter, he talks about his love for Ruth and all the moments they shared. The hardships, the love, and the compassion that Ruth and Ira shared cannot be compared. The two are deeply in love. The first painting on auction is one of Ruth, by Daniel MacDonald. But no one in the crowd is willing to buy the portrait of a woman they did not and certainly did not love. The price goes down from $1,000 to $800 and then $600 and suddenly there is a voice at the back, Luke's voice. He buys the painting for $600, surprising Sophia as she turns back and looks at him, pleasantly surprised. She walks outside to where he is, asking what he is doing here at an art auction, and he tells her that he is done bull riding. He confesses that the whole time, he didn't think he won, because he kept thinking about her. They kiss, and then she asks what made him buy that painting. He tells her Ira did. Just then, they are interrupted by the receptionist, who comes out of the very bustling auction room, asking for Luke who is busy kissing Sophia. As the couple goes back inside, the attorney reads Ira's will again. In the will, it is stated that whoever buys the portrait of Ruth will get the entire art collection. Sophia quickly murmurs to Luke that the paintings are worth millions of dollars, and they walk up front to claim the paintings after being hoarded by the many rich folks who are willing to purchase the paintings. The couple sits with the attorney and talks about Ira's will. Luke has just become a very wealthy man. The next scene is a beautiful art gallery, with Sophia sitting in the middle of it. Luke parks outside the building, 
which is named the Era and Ruth Museum. Sophia walks out and gets in his car as they kiss. It seems she has opened a museum, whereas Luke has opened a ranch. The two of them drive to Black Mountain College, the place where Era used to sit with Ruth. They sit together by the big tree and read Era's letters to Ruth. They run to the lake, take their clothes off and jump into the water. In the water, they kiss passionately. Sophia repeats the same words Ruth spoke to Era the first time he proposed to her. What took you so long? 